This is our 1988 Chevrolet Silverado. We like to call it Old Blue. I've been having trouble getting the brakes to bleed on it. I've replaced the master cylinder, wheel cylinders in the back, brakes, and the calipers in the front and the brakes. I still can't get it to bleed right. We're going to try to fix it with this. Let's get into it. While this truck's been parked for several years, we've been trying to get the brakes to go on it. And we've replaced everything except this proportioning valve here. And the brake line burst on the back when we were moving it around. And what that usually causes, it'll cause this proportioning valve to shift to one side. It doesn't look like it's pushed out, but it'll favor the front brakes and block off the rear brakes because that's where the line busted in order to preserve the brake fluid and make you still have some brake pressure. I think it's not reset. I think it's moved. And the only way to reset it is, is you take the uh, brake light switch out and the brake light does come on whenever I try to apply the brakes indicating that there's some type of problem. I know the fluid's not low and I know it's not low on pressure so it has to be this proportionate valve, I'm guessing. So this little thing here, let me take the tip off of it. It's got a pin in it. And threads and when you screw that brake light switch out there's a spool in there you thread this in and it should center that spool back up and it'll hold that spool so you can bleed the brakes that way it won't shift back and lock the brakes off every time you try to bleed it that's what I'm going to try to do I've got a bleeding kit something new we're going to try out let's try to get this switch out of here first thing I believe that's supposed to move. It does. I can't see down in there to see where the spool is. I'll try to thread this in and see if it makes any difference. I'm looking at the pin out here on the end to see if it moves any. It's bottomed out. And there's just a spool in there. Whenever one line breaks, it shifts and favors one side. If the other line breaks, it shifts back and favors that one. But when you try to bleed it, if you ain't got this lock in there, whenever you try to break the bleeder screw, it might shift this and block off the one that you're trying to bleed. So this centering pin holds it in place. Um, this is something they started, I guess back in the 70s with this proportioning valve when they started going to disc brakes in front, drums in the rear. So you want to favor the front brakes. So this is something that they came with as a safety device for that. Now that we've got the spool locked, the spool can't move. I should be able to hook my bleeder up to the rear and work my way back to the front. I want to take this off because we want to be able to keep this full while we're bleeding it. I want to bleed everything until the uh, clear fluid comes out all four wheels. This kit also has a, a one-way valve in it. That way, whatever it draws out, it can't let air go back towards the, the wheel cylinder. So I guess I'm ready to hook this thing up and give it a shot. I've got the right wrench on it and I've got the little end connected to the bleeder it's probably going to be loud let me see if I can get this hooked up okay that's going to work now now I need to I guess turn it on okay, can I open? you see the fluid slowly going through it Some air coming through too. So that that worked quite well. And there's the one-way valve here that should keep it from going backwards. But I saw quite a bit of air. 
and it's the first time it's really bled. Let's try it again. I see some bubbles. Let me go check our reservoir. Now I've got to try to do this one handed. Push this lever down, lock it on, and reach up here and wait. it. Try to get a fluid coming out. I think I've got this one bled. It bled pretty quick. This thing's pretty handy. It's a one-person bleeder, but it does require air. Now, they do make one that you put over top of the master cylinder that you pump air into like a tobacco sprayer, you, like a pump sprayer. And it pressurizes like 10 or 15 pounds, and then you come back here and bleed it. It's just like somebody putting on the brakes. So... They work on these, but the type master cylinder I got, you gotta have a special adapter, which is like 50 bucks. It's $80 for the pressure kit, and then another 50 bucks for the adapter. So I decided I'd just go with this thing. I can't remember what this was. I think it's 40 bucks on Scamazon. It looks like it's pretty well made. It's I'm sure it's raw Chinese, but it's got a pot for your fluid. It's got uh this is a quick disconnect for your hose. It's got a knob over here on the other side that you for draining it. And then a lock for holding it on. One thing I don't like is when the hose is hooked to it, it won't stand up. It won't stay up by itself. So now I need to fill the reservoir back up and move on to the front brakes. A bit tighter up here in the front. <laughs> There's a giant stick under here. I don't know why that's here. Okay, if I can get this pressure pot turned on and still hold the camera and keep the crap out of my eyes. Do it again. Yep, there's plenty of fluid coming out. Okay. Now turn this off. Now, it's rough under here. I'm going to turn the wheel on the other side and see if I can do it without crawling under the truck. Uh, this was an easy brand new caliper. How about that? loose for some reason. Time it jumps, I believe it's getting air. Yeah, it's 
I don't know if it's leaking around the field or what. Didn't go down very much. I think I might run it a little bit longer. Just to see what happens. Maybe. Well, it's an interesting idea. The con the whole concept is. Whether it's working right or not, who knows? It's like it's not getting a good connection. Quite a bit of wood out. Now to see if it's got pedal. Now if anybody out there takes my advice for anything, don't buy a GoPro camera. This has been this GoPro 10 has been the worst piece of junk I've ever had. Only the front screen works. The black the back screen turns black and stays that way. I take the battery out, put it back. It doesn't make any difference. We're gonna try to do this without being able to see what we're doing. I did top this back off. It looks like it hasn't used too much. I'm gonna go back and uh, try to bleed it a little bit more on the pasture side rear. Well, that's kind of done. I'm gonna ask the pedal and create a little fountain. Let's try that again with the with the lid on it. Do that one more time. Pretty firm with the engine off. The real test is going to be driving it. I feel like there was air in the system because of the way it was jerking around. Got quite a bit of pedal. But still, I got to take that valve out there and put the switch back in this locking pin i don't know if that has anything to do with the brakes if you can press them with that in or not i may have messed something up who knows come out pretty easy put the little prophylactic back on there and put this switch back in looks like it just makes contact it closes up makes contact Let's see what happens. The pin appears to be further in than it was. Here. And this is a 5 8 Put this connector back on. It has to be centered perfectly. There it is. I should probably take this back off. Put the little cover back on. Take this thing. I don't like that it don't stand up by itself with the hose on it anyway. off and maybe it'll work. Somebody's not even my floor. It's firmer. Then that it go over to the floor before. It's a, got a cam in it. 
end of it. She definitely done it running rich and I rebuilt the throttle body on it. Whew, smell pure raw gasoline. Do I have a leak? Who knows? But that was interesting. Uh, I, I've had this issue before with many brakes I've done on these old Chevrolets and I've never once had to put this centering pin but I've had this same issue over and over and then one day it just finally would just have brakes so it might have righted itself on these, some of these old trucks but I've been doing this I don't know how long string on me I don't know how long I've been doing this, but I've never used one of these centering pins. I have had somebody hold pressure on this pin until the brakes were bled, so maybe that has something to do with it. But uh, now that I've got one of these, this is something I want to do every time I run into one with a proportioning valve. And I recommend that anybody else do the same that's got a Chevrolet from the 70s all the way through the 90s. It's got one of these style proportioning valves on it that's got disc and drums. I'm not sure if it has the same style, disc and disc, disc in front, disc in back. You definitely, there's a couple of these available. I don't know if they're different sizes, but I recommend it to anybody that's working on one of these. I, I don't know if it's the same on other models, but I know GM has this particular type of proportioning valve. And some old hot rods that people converted to disc brakes, they'll have these. You definitely need to, definitely need to use this on those older ones especially i don't know if that's a case with a adjustable proportioning valve because it may not have this lock off spool in it so that may be the case i'm ready to drive this thing now i've got the battery charged ready to take it out on the road and and uh i, I can't stand that raw gas smell though i like to try to figure out where it's coming from i think it's just it's either got a bad plug war or fouled or got something going on in the distributor. I've replaced the distributor in this truck before because they have water in it. And that's not the first time that's happened. And it ran exactly the same. It ran like it's only running on a couple of cylinders. So I may be able to dry it out with some WD-40. But I think I might pop the cap off here in a minute and, and take a look. Well, it's running like crap. But the brakes are respectable and the windshield's nasty. Let's see if we go up the road. Shifted in a second really quick. speed I think it's a either a 200 or a 700 or four so it's uh, it shifts pretty good it does leak transmission fluid it's got a rear seal out I believe and I'm enjoying driving along it feels really good it's one of the better driving vehicles I've ever owned and it's got two bad tires in the front. Of course, I guess the tires all the way around are bad, but I'm getting some good brakes here finally. It doesn't go all the way to the floor and the brake light doesn't come on, so maybe we've got that lick. We've got all new brake lines. Yeah, it's got a bad miss. It could be that distributor cap or the rotary button because I think the wires are pretty good shape. The plugs, I just changed all the plugs and it didn't really take the miss out. But I have had issues with that distributor before. That's a, a Cardone or Cardon distributor in it. That I put in there back when we was having trouble before, but of course it's been sitting for more than a decade. So what do you expect? It's pretty country out in here. Everybody's mowing. It feels like, it feels like summer already. Feels great driving this old truck. I miss it. I miss it more than anything. This is 
this was my dad's truck it belonged to one of my uncles and then it belonged to another one of my uncles before that and then a friend of the family so it's been passed around but it's hung in there I think it's close to 200,000 miles little miss shifts right out I think it's got 195,957 miles and who knows how much is on this actual engine but I'm getting ready I think I'm going to pull the engine and rebuild it just a thought let's turn in here at the school we'll see if we get turn signals it acts like we do Do a loop de doo. Hear them old tires are squalling. Look how dirty that windshield is. I just washed this thing the other day, but it's been pollen everywhere. Tenth of May. Just a couple days after my dad's birthday. Of course, he passed away in 2008, and that's when I got this truck, and I haven't done much with it. My son drove it for a while, and me and my son done quite a bit of work on it. We went all through the brake system and put everything new in it, and of course, where it's been sitting, it's kind of ruined it. And now it's got all new brakes again. A little hesitation there. Shifts fantastic. I thought I was going to put a transmission in it, but I believe the transmission, if I can fix the leaks, will be fine. Because it was rebuilt again just a couple years before we parked it, the transmission was. But I think setting's harder on than anything. I can't wait to get the, this thing's already licensed and ready to hit the road, so if I can get the little miss out, I can start driving it. crappy tires it still rides fantastic I can hear them hard tires on the road but the, the way this thing rides feels good now, I know there's one shock I can't remember if it's on the front passenger side or the rear passenger side there's one shock that's rotting completely off of it <laughs> so it, it needs shocks I'm sure it needs rotors in the front too I did not put new rotors on it I just put new calipers and brake pads on it I think I've got rear, new rear pads. I'm, I can't remember if Matt put um, shoes on it or if he just replaced the calipers. I think he put shoes on it. Who knows? But this is winding down our little ride. We're getting close to home again. Somebody coming up on us. I do love driving this trip. Anybody that's got an old classic car, this is what you need to be doing. You need to get it out and wrench on it and make it ride again, make it live again. It's so much fun and it relieves so much stress for me to get out and tinker. Sometimes I get aggravated, but I always go right back to it because I love it. And you should too. You should. It's, it's a great way to relax. Got a turn, and I hope that my turn signals work because this little car behind me is right in my bumper. Let's get turned in here and get off the road. I'm gonna stop and collect my garbage can, and we'll be on up the hill. Well, there it is. The old blue Chevy lives again. We ripped up and down the road a little bit. Took her for a ride. It's running like poop and missing like you wouldn't believe. But I think that just means a little bit of tinkering and tuning. More work, more videos, more content. More stuff we can do. I enjoyed riding around in it. Hopefully we'll get to do more wrenching on it. There's the old Disco Nova. It's out getting a suntan today. The original disco Nova. California.
California and that thing's only six. It's got a, I know it's got a crappy yink old paint job on it. needs to be painted. I hate that paint job because it's the wrong year. It's for like a 69 Yinko. And this is a 76. Doesn't fit. But I want to thank you guys for watching. Come back and hang out with us again. Appreciate you watching. And if you ain't already subscribed, go ahead and subscribe to our channel. We appreciate the we appreciate you guys looking at it and watching our videos. And we'll have some more content in a day or two. Thank you guys for watching. Stay clean, everybody.